non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. The cell membrane phospholipid is degraded by phospholipase A2 to arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is further degraded by the cyclooxygenase isozymes COX-1 and COX-2 into prostaglandin G2, which is transformed to prostaglandin H2, the direct precursor of most prostanoids. Prostaglandin synthase enzymes catalyze the production of PGD2, PGE2 and PGF2 alpha. Similarly, thromboxane synthase enzymes catalyze the production of thromboxane A2 from PGH2, whereas prostacyclin synthase catalyzes the production of prostacyclin I2 or PGI2. There are two main pathways for arachidonic acid metabolism, either via the COX-1 or COX-2 enzyme pathways. COX-1 is a constitutive enzyme, whereas COX-2 isozyme is an inducible form. COX-1 is produced in response to normal physiological stimuli, whilst COX-2 is upregulated in response to inflammatory stimuli. COX-1 mediates a wide range of biological and cytoprotective roles, whereas COX-2 mediates the production of inflammatory effects. Now, we will review the physiological roles of the COX-1 pathway. In the gastrointestinal tract, otherwise known as the GI tract, COX-1 plays an important cytoprotective role. It keeps the production of gastric acid low and increases the protective mucus production. In the kidney, COX-1 mediates the vasodilation of renal blood vessels. In platelets, thromboxane A2, produced via the COX-1 pathway, induces platelet aggregation. On the other hand, the COX-2 enzymes mediates the production of various inflammatory mediators. Like COX-1, COX-2 mediates cytoprotective roles in the kidney. It enhances sodium and water secretion. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, abbreviated as NSAIDs, non-selectively inhibit both COX-1 and COX-2 metabolic pathways. On the other hand, selective COX-2 inhibitors work more selectively on the COX-2 pathway. This means that the physiological functions of the COX-1 pathway are largely spared. The desired and unwanted side effects of both drug groups will be thoroughly compared in the remainder of the video. Non-selective NZs are a large family of popular drugs among the most commonly prescribed medications in this group. They include aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, indomethacin and diclofenac. Now, let's get started with the advantages of non-selective NSAIDs. As their name implies, they have anti-inflammatory effects due to the inhibition of inflammatory mediator production via the COX-2 isozymes. This is the main clinical indication of this widely prescribed group. Other biological effects of non-selective NSAIDs is the interference with platelet aggregation in blood vessels. As a result of suppression of platelet thromboxane A2 production, through the COX-1 pathway. How is this important clinical effect significant only for the aspirin drug? Could you guess why? Apart from aspirin, all other non-steroidals reversibly inhibit the thromboxane A2 production 
Fear the cock's one pathway. On the other hand, aspirin irreversibly inhibits the COX-1 enzymes and the thromboxane production. Now, let's switch to the other side of the coin, the disadvantages of non-selective NZs, starting with its most worrying side effect, which is GIT, gastrointestinal complications. As you will remember, prostaglandins produced via the COX-1 pathway have cytoprotective effects as they suppress gastric acid production and stimulate the production of protective gastric mucus. Logically, therefore, interference of the COX-1 enzyme will suppress the production of friendly prostaglandins and as a result, gastric acid secretion will be increased and the gastric mucus production will be suppressed. These unwanted changes will largely increase the risk of peptic ulcer and hemorrhage, which leads to internal ble bleeding and are the major drawbacks of this drug group. The question now is how to attenuate the gastrointestinal side effects of non-selective NZs in patients that have no alternative for this important anti-inflammatory drug group. Actually, there are two pharmacological choices to lessen these serious side effects. Firstly, prior administration of one of the cytoprotective proton pump inhibitor drugs, such as ESO. Alternatively, administration of prostaglandin agonists such as misoprostol might alleviate the GIT complications. The other important side effect of the wide use of non-selective NSAIDs results from suppression of renal cytoprotective prostaglandins produced via both COX-1 and COX-2 pathways. Inhibition of cytoprotective prostaglandins induces renal vasoconstriction, which results in fluid and sodium retention and increases blood pressure, which leads to increases in the risk of cardiovascular complications. The renal and cardiovascular complications of non-selective NSAIDs might not be as common as the GIT complications but there are real serious challenges due to a large percentage of the popula population that use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, we will study the relatively newly introduced selective COX-2 inhibitor group, which includes celecoxib, rofecoxib and valdecoxib drugs. Talking about the advantages of selective COX-2 inhibitors definitely will lead us towards their anti-inflammatory effects, which is their main clinical indication, just like the non-selective NZs. However, unlike non-selective NZs, and due to its increased selectivity towards COX-2 activity, they must have less inhibitory effects on the COX-1 mediated GIT productive, protective effects. It should be noted that this group of drugs is not absolutely selective towards COX-2 activity as it still has some inhibitory effects on the COX-1 pathway, but these effects are far weaker than those of non-selective non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Therefore, the COX-2 inhibitors become better choices than non-selective NSAIDs in patients with a history of peptic ulcer disease. This is indeed the main advantage of COX-2 selective inhibitors over the non-selective NSAIDs. Now we come face to face with the most debated and dramatically evolving aspect of selective COX-2 inhibitors, 
which is their cardiovascular complications. For a long time, it has been suggested that the lack of significant inhibitory effect of COX-2 inhibitors on platelet thromboxane production in the COX-1 pathway, in addition to their inhibitory effect on renal cytoprotective frostocyclin activity in the COX-2 pathway, leads to serious cardiovascular complications, such as ischemic heart diseases. Indeed, two of the selective COX-2 inhibitors were withdrawn from marketing due to concerns about the increased risk of ischemic heart disease. Rofecoxib was withdrawn in 2004 and Foldicoxib in 2005. However, some new research, a huge clinical trial that was reported on in 2016, has shown that there are no significant differences between celecoxib and other non-selective NZs in terms of ischemic heart disease. Therefore, the selective COX-2 inhibitors are now being reinstated clinically and are in use for diseases such as the treatment of arthritis.